Hashish Hashish, or hash, is a drug made from cannabis. Hashish is cannabis resin. It is consumed by smoking a small piece, typically in a pipe, bong, vaporizer or joint, or via oral ingestion, after decarboxylation. As pure hashish will not burn if rolled alone in a joint, it is typically mixed with herbal cannabis, tobacco or another type of herb for this method of consumption. Depending on region or country, multiple synonyms and alternative names exist. Hash is an extracted cannabis product composed of compressed or purified preparations of stalked resin glands, called trichomes, from the plant. It is defined by the 1961 UN Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, Schedule 1 and 4, as the separated resin, whether crude or purified, obtained from the cannabis plant. The resin contains ingredients such as tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, and other cannabinoids but often in higher concentrations than the unsifted or unprocessed cannabis flower. Purities of confiscated hashish in Europe, 2011, range between 4 to 15 percent. Between 2000 and 2005 the percentage of hashish in cannabis and product seizures was at 18 percent. Hashish may be solid or resinous depending on both preparation and room temperature. Pressed hashish is usually solid, whereas water-purified hashish, often called bubble melt hash, or simply bubble hash is often a paste-like substance with varying hardness and pliability. Its color, most commonly light to dark brown, can vary from transparent to yellow, tan, black, or red. This all depends on the process and amount of leftover plant material, i.e. chlorophyll. Hashish was the primary form of cannabis used in Europe in 2008. Herbal cannabis is more widely used in Northern America. Besides its recreational use, the active ingredient of hashish, THC, has been of interest for research and medical purposes since its arrival in the 18th century. While it was widely used as a medicine for multiple diseases, the emergence of specific treatments led to a sharp decline in prescriptions, eventually becoming illegal to use via the 1971 UN Convention on Psychotropic Substances. The street price for hashish in Europe in 2011 varied from 3 euros, Portugal, per gram to 18 euros in Malta, or even as high as 200 Norwegian kroner, year 20 slash dollar 25, in Norway. Hashish has been consumed for many centuries, though there is no clear evidence as to its first appearance. North India has a long social tradition in the production of hashish, known locally as jaras, which is believed to be the same plant resin as was burned in the ceremonial buzrus of ancient Persia. The first attestation of the term hashish is in a pamphlet published in Cairo in 1123 CE, accusing Nizari Muslims of being hashish eaters. The 13th century Ibn Taymiyyah prohibited the use of hashish, he mentioned that it was introduced to Levant with the Mongol invasion, throughout the 13th century. Smoking did not become common in the old world until after the introduction of tobacco, so up until the 1500s hashish in the Muslim world was consumed as an edible. In 1596, Dutchman Jan Hagen van Linschoten spent three pages on bong, bong, in his historic work documenting his journeys in the East. He particularly mentioned the Egyptian hashish. He said, bong is likewise much used in Turkey and Egypt, and is made in three sorts, having also three names. The first by the Egyptians is called Aziz, Hashish, Arab, which is the polder of hemp, or of hemp leaves, which is water made in paste or dough. They would eat five pieces, each, as big as a chestnut, or larger. This is used by the common people, because it is of a small price, and it is no wonder, that such verda proceedeth from the hempe, for that according to Galen's opinion, hempe excessively filleth the head. Hashish arrived in Europe from the east during the 18th century and is first mentioned scientifically by Gamelin in 1777. The Napoleonic campaigns introduced French troops to hashish in Egypt and the first description of usefulness stems from 1830 by pharmacist and botanist Theodor Friedrich Ludwig Nies von Nesenbeck. In 1811, the founder of homeopathy, Samuel Hahnemann, published approving of the effects of cannabis sativa in his work Rain Erz Neomitier, Materia Medica Pura. In 1839, O'Shaughnessy wrote a comprehensive study of Indian hemp, which was recognized by the European School of Medicine and describes hashish as relief for cramps and causing the disappearance of certain symptoms from afflictions such as rabies, cholera, and tetanus. This led to high hopes in the medical community. In 1840, Louis Albert Roche reported his successful use of hashish against pestilence. Also, psychiatric experiments with hashish were done at the same time, with Jacques Joseph Moreau being convinced that it is the supreme medicament for use in psychiatry.
Germany. In the 19th century, hashish was embraced in some European literary circles. Most famously, the Club des Hashishchins was a Parisian club dedicated to the consumption of hashish and other drugs. Its members included literary luminaries such as Théophile Gautier, Dr. Moreau de Tours, Victor Hugo, Alexandre Dumas, Charles Baudelaire and Honoré de Balzac. Baudelaire later wrote the 1860 book Clay Paradis Artificials, about the state of being under the influence of opium and hashish. At around the same time, American author Fitzhugh Ludlow wrote the 1857 book The Hashish Eater about his youthful experiences, both positive and negative, with the drug. Hashish was also mentioned and used as an anesthetic in Germany in 1869. At these times, hashish was imported in great quantities especially from India and called Shiraz. However, there were also people who did not deem cannabis as harmless. Between 1880 and 1900 was the peak of the medicinal use, where hashish compounds were most commonplace in almost all European countries and the USA. Evidence of misuse at that time was practically non-existent as opposed to widespread reports in Asia and Africa. Hashish played a significant role in the treatment of pain, migraine, dysmenorrhea, pertussis asthma and insomnia in Europe and USA towards the end of the 19th century. Rare applications included stomachache, depression, diarrhea, diminished appetite, pruritus, hemorrhage, Bosido syndrome and malaria. The usage of hashish decreased as even supporters agreed on the unreliability of its compounds, with critics calling it worthless and dangerous. Eventually, hashish as a medicine disappeared completely in the 20th century with the introduction of specific medicines for all of its main applications. The use was later prohibited worldwide as the use as a medicine was made impossible by the 1961 UN Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs. At the beginning of the 20th century, the majority of hashish in Europe came from Kashmir, Afghanistan, and parts of India, as well as Greece, Syria, Nepal, Lebanon, and Turkey. Larger markets developed in the late 1960s and early 1970s when most of the hashish was imported from Pakistan and Afghanistan. Due to disruptive conflicts in the regions, Morocco took over and was the sufficient exporter until lately. It is believed that massive hashish production for international trade originated in Morocco during the 1960s, where the cannabis plant was widely available. Before the coming of the first hippies from the hippie hashish trail, only small pieces of Lebanese hashish were found in Morocco. However, since the 2000s there has been a dramatic shift in the market due to an increase of homegrown cannabis production. While Morocco held a quasi-monopoly in the 1990s with the so-called 250 gram soap bar blocks, which were of low quality, Afghanistan has now been announced as the biggest producer of higher quality hashish. Since then, the quality in Europe has increased while the prices have remained stable. According to the European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction, IMSTA, Western Europe is the biggest market for cannabis resin with 70% off global seizures. The European hashish market is changing though, cannabis cultivation increased throughout the 1990s until 2004, with a noticeable decrease reported in 2005 according to the European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction. Morocco has been the major source, however lately there has been a shift in the market and Afghanistan has been named the major producer of hashish. Even though a drop in usage and production has been reported, Morocco produced around 6,600 tons of resin in 2005. As 641 tons of hashish were consumed in the EU in 2013, the European market is currently the world's largest and most profitable. Therefore, many actors are involved in the business, including organized crime groups. The largest cannabis resin seizures in Europe happen in Spain, due to its proximity to Northern Africa. The 1990s soap bars disappeared and the physical shapes of hashish changed to melon-shaped, tablets or olive-shaped pellets. Overall the general trend of domestically grown cannabis displacing the imported resin leads to a market reaction of potency changes while the prices remain stable while soap bar potency increased from 8% to up to 20.7% in 2014. Generally, more resin than herb is consumed in Europe. As hashish is a derivative of cannabis, it has the same substance properties. When smoked, THC can be detected in plasma within seconds, with a half-life of two hours. Due to its lipophilic nature, it is widely distributed through the body, and some metabolites can be detected in urine for up to two weeks following consumption.
Hashish is made from cannabinoid-rich glandular hairs known as trichomes, as well as varying amounts of cannabis flower and leaf fragments. The flowers of a mature female plant contain the most trichomes, though trichomes are also found on other parts of the plant. Certain strains of cannabis are cultivated specifically for their ability to produce large amounts of trichomes. The resin reservoirs of the trichomes, sometimes erroneously called pollen, Vendors often use the euphemism pollen catchers to describe screen keef grinders in order to skirt paraphernalia selling laws, are separated from the plant through various methods. Hashish is often consumed in a social setting, being smoked by multiple people who share a pipe, bong, joint or vaporizer. The pharmacology of hashish is complicated because of the wide range of cannabinoids. There is little evidence for damage to the organ system, only due to the consumption in combination with tobacco. There has also been an association with schizophrenia, however it is unclear if there is a causative relationship. Generally the after effects are the same as for cannabis use in general, including its long-term effects. Hashish can be consumed by oral ingestion or smoking, typically in a pipe, bong, vaporizer or joints, where it is normally mixed with cannabis or tobacco, as pure hashish will burn poorly if burned alone. In some parts of Canada, individuals do what is known as bottle tokish, in which they take a lit cigarette, stick a bot, small hashish ball, then let the smoke fill the bottle before inhalation. THC has a low water solubility therefore ingestion leads to poor absorption. Generally the methods are similar to overall cannabis consumption. As hashish active ingredient is THC it has the same effects as cannabis. Most well-known effect of hashish is a euphoric, drowsy. Sedated effect. A certain relief of anxiety is often reported. During a high, the user experiences a distortion of time and space. It has been claimed that the user's psychological and physiological needs will influence the response and that the user must cooperate with and facilitate the effects. Therefore, the effect of the physical and interpersonal setting is strong and usually controls the underlying tone of the experience. Generally, the intensification of sensation and increased clarity of perception have been reported. Short-lived adverse effects have also been reported, including psychotic states following heavy consumption. Regular users are at risk of dependence. Especially people with major mental illnesses for example schizophrenia are vulnerable as hashish provokes relapse and aggravates existing symptoms. As perceptual changes are very hard to measure, most studies on the altered state of consciousness concentrate on subjective descriptions only. The general awareness of proprioceptive responses seem to enhance, as emotional involvement is reported to enhance perception in general. Taste and smell seem intensified and visual scenes seem to have more depth while sounds are heard with more dimension. Perception of time is also reported to change. There is a general experience of time distortion where events take longer to occur and the subject is involved in internal fantasies with the impression that external time has slowed down. However, there seems to be no impression of speed or rapidity for internal processes. Similar effects are common in normal experience, for example, when time slows down in boredom. It is proposed that this distortion is caused as the experience itself is the focus of attention rather than what is happening around the individual. Functional associations seem to decrease in strength, and there are fewer mental impositions on the sensory perception of the object. Aspects which are normally filtered out are given equal attention. Therefore, Objects are not necessarily conceptualized via their use but rather experience it as a whole. Detailed attention is paid, focusing on certain aspects of an object, a sentence or any other perceptual input in a magnifying way. Clearly the attention process is affected. Only a narrow amount of diverse content is the focus of attention and fewer objects are perceived. A person may become absorbed by one object, event or process up to the exclusion of everything else which has been called the train of fantasy and has been described as a form of tunnel vision where the individual is more aware of an individual element of meaning, emotion etc. There seems to be a certain unity of attention while normally attention relies on multiple channels. Flights of fantasy and dreaming, including perceiving connections and associations of ideas that do not seem accessible in a normal state are often reported. There seems to be a reduction of the automatic availability of memory images, however an increased strength of memories when relevant to central needs. Experiences seem new and are experienced without a feeling of familiarity and is more intense if emotionally salient. This emotional force may activate internal imagery, which is used to search for identity or to interpret incoming stimuli. Short-term memory becomes shorter and in a very high state the sequence of thoughts is not remembered past one or two transitions. 
expectancies and anticipation which are important to keep behavior consistent and normal states seem to be decreased in strength which might lead to surprising or out-of-character behavior. Normally these expectancies let the person behave in a goal-directed and reasonable manner, with the decrease the person might act out in illogical and unforeseeable ways. Similarly inhibitions, especially social inhibition seems to be reduced, resulting in playful behavior and acting on impulses. The sticky resins of the fresh flowering female cannabis plant are collected by pressing or rubbing the flowering plant between two hands and then forming the sticky resins into a small ball of hashish called shiraz. Mechanical separation methods use physical action to remove the trichomes from the dried plant material, such as sieving through a screen by hand or in motorized tumblers. This technique is known as dry sifting. The resulting powder, referred to as kefir or dry sift, is compressed with the aid of heat into blocks of hashish, if pure. The keef will become gooey and pliable. When a high level of pure THC is present, the end product will be almost transparent and will start to melt at the point of human contact. Ice water separation is another mechanical method of isolating trichomes. Newer techniques have been developed, such as heat and pressure separations, static electricity sieving, or acoustical dry sieving. Trichomes may break away from supporting stalks and leaves when plant material becomes brittle at low temperatures. After plant material has been agitated in an icy slush, separated trichomes are often dense enough to sink to the bottom of the ice water mixture following agitation, while lighter pieces of leaves and stems tend to float. The ice water method requires ice, water, agitation, filtration bags with various sized screens, and plant material. With the ice water extraction method terrazine becomes hard and brittle and can easily be separated. This allows large quantities of pure resins to be extracted in a very clean process without the use of solvents, making for a more purified hashish. Chemical separation methods generally use a solvent such as ethanol, butane or hexane to dissolve the lipophilic desirable resin. Remaining plant materials are filtered out of the solution and sent to the compost. The solvent is then evaporated, or boiled off purged, leaving behind the desirable resins, called honey oil, hash oil, or just oil. Honey oil still contains waxes and essential oils and can be further purified by vacuum distillation to yield red oil. The product of chemical separations is more commonly referred to as honey oil. This oil is not really hashish, as the latter name covers trichomes that are extracted by sieving. This leaves most of the glands intact. In a study conducted in 2014 by Jean-Jacques Philippi, Marie Marchini, Celine Charvos, Lawrence Dujardi and Nicholas Baldovini, multidimensional analysis of cannabis volatile constituents, identification of 5,5-dimethyl-1-vinyl bicyclo 2.1.1 hexane as a volatile marker of hashish, the resin of cannabis sativa L. The researchers linked the characteristic flavor of hashish with a rearrangement of myrcene caused during the process of manufacture. Depending on the production process, the product can be contaminated with different amount of dirt and plant fragments, vary greatly in terms of appearance, texture, odor and potency. Also, adulterants may be added in order to increase weight or modify appearance. Morocco has been the major hashish producer globally with 10.8 billion euros earned with Moroccan resin in 2004. However, Chuvi, 2016, suggests that some of so-called Moroccan actually stems from local European production. The income for the farmers lay around 325 million euros in 2005. While the overall amount of plants and areas shrank in size, the introduction of more potent hybrid plant produced a high resin rate. The range or resin produced is estimated between 3,800 and 9,500 tons in 2005. The largest producer today is Afghanistan, however, studies suggest there is a hashish revival in Morocco. Tiny pieces of leaf matter may be accidentally or even purposely added. Adulterants introduced when the hashish is being produced will reduce the purity of material and often resulting in green finished product. The tetrahydrocannabinol (THC) content of hashish comes in wide ranges from almost none to 65% and that of hash oil from 30% to 90%. As mentioned above, there has been a general increase in potency as the competition has grown bigger and new hybrid plants have been developed. Nup, Shiraz, Shish, Kif and others. Street names often refer to the shape in which the hash is formed, such as a candy bar, soap bar, nine bar, finger, patties, or surfboard. The country of origin is also used as a description, for example, Black Afghan, 
blonde Lebanese, or Moroccan. Ref name equals hash, hashish information slash ref. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.